Hi everyone. Welcome back to Cultural Healing. So I'm back again with another Overcoming Sexual Abuse series with my boo, Tony Rio. Hi. <laughs> right. So we are about to cut it up and chop it up and break shit down. Today our topic will be boundaries and why as um a sexual abuse person need to get boundaries early in their life so they don't allow certain things to happen to them or don't allow certain things or certain people to do things to them we have never learned that we've always think that whatever it is someone say to us or do to us we deserve it so we allow certain things to happen to us so today we are going to be talking about the boundaries we should have been taught and should be see what happened yeah. i keep hitting the mouse Oh, ah. yeah, I'm saying it right, and then it went out. So you gotta do it again. Nah, it's okay. I think that one is gonna stay in the bag. Hopefully, okay. it should stay in the bag. I hope it does. Oh, right? Shoot. Yeah. So that's fine. We're gonna be good. We'll. This will be fine. Right. So, honey bunny, do you wanna start first? Only thing I can think of that first off in my head this morning was you can't heal what you hurt, mm. and I, I feel like the boundaries. From my experience, was the most important step of healing. Mm. The boundaries. Um, what did I write? Yeah, I said so. Pretty much like without the boundaries, I feel like he had nothing but a bunch of triggers. Mm. And I literally created my boundaries based on what my triggers were. Yeah. So if you were triggering me, I would create a boundary. Mm. <laughs> and that's just to to me. That is literally what allowed me to heal myself it gave me more time because I didn't have to spend more time going against somebody who like I felt like was out to get me mm. and honestly once I really accepted that my healing process went like that mm. I feel like the things that were making my healing longer and harder was the fact that I was not trying to create boundaries and stay with them like I knew what I needed to do, but I was kind of like, maybe I'm wrong. You know what I mean? Like those those self limiting beliefs kept popping up, and it's like maybe it's this, and maybe it's maybe you tripping, and it's like no, you're not tripping. <laughs> this happened, and this is this, and this is that. And this is how you feel, and I think that's the most important thing with boundaries too. Is like nobody can really tell you what your boundaries are. Yeah, because they're yours. They're your boundaries, so they're based on your feelings. Like how do you do and that's I mean that's that's the first thing that popped in my head is just like the stand the standards of what boundaries would even be mm. for a person of you know coming from sexual abuse we definitely won't get into deeper yeah about it but yeah I feel like you can't <clears throat> hurt at least give yourself that time to get your thoughts and feelings and emotions and things back in order before you try to restore mm. that's what I'm saying. For I'm, me, I'm, honestly, that was my biggest mistake. I ain't even gonna hold you. It was the biggest thing. And I didn't just like when I consciously started to heal, I was doing it like this. But once I start seeing that pattern, is when I started to notice that that's exactly what I was doing when I was younger. Like I was I was forgiving and trying to force myself to forget and I was restoring like nothing ever happened. Hmm. So and I was hurting. In my dynamic, I had to learn that I had to create boundaries in order for me to not allow things to happen. I had to realize that I had to create boundaries in my mind, in my, in my head for me, because I was more of, a, of an abuser to myself. So the fact that I was mostly abusing myself, I allow other people to abuse me because hell, I abusing the shit out of me too. So therefore you could come and join the bandwagon at this point. So I created, I had to stop myself from hurting me in order for me to see what it is that I was allowing other people to do and how other people were hurting me. So that's how come I started to create boundaries for myself first, because I am the person who would create, it creates my own downfall in anything. I basically did not have control over myself when it comes to things and I couldn't tell myself no one mean it and don't do it I didn't have that so I had to create that boundary and say listen to me 
this is what we're doing today and this is what we're not going to allow today and i am not allowing you to talk to me and self-hate on myself like that i had to stop myself from doing it after a while and i found where those self-negative talks were coming from and who they came from and why is it i continue to allow those self-negative talks to continue in my head so i had to create boundaries for myself first and then heal the other triggers and as she said heal those triggers and heal um and stop other people from doing things in my end of the world mm. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's deep because i feel that's another thing I, I like about boundaries too it's i think it's a post out there that says like uh the people who you need boundaries with won't respect them they don't say that exactly but it's pretty much like that like people are like, well, who do I, how, where do I need boundaries? Now, for me, I just need boundaries all around me. Mm. That's how, that's how, as they broken, I was. Like, that's mm. how messed up I was. I needed protection all around me completely. Like, but like that post is saying, I started to realize why I needed protection around me so heavily for me personally, because the people that I needed to, to, to be protected were, were the ones that were violating my boundaries. Mm. So it was real weird. Like you said, it was definitely a combination of both because I allowed these things to happen. But then through my healing process, when I was no longer in a space and people still couldn't respect my boundaries, mm-hmm. that's when I was going to go no contact me personally. Because it's like, I am healing, I am working on myself and you're not respecting it. Yeah. So I got to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wasn't taking you back. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. the people ask me, like, you really want no contact? Like, what does that mean? And I'm like, for me, I had, I had, I feel like I had no other choice. Mm. Like I feel so much more happier without having contact. And unfortunately, it's with everybody from my past. There's no mm-hmm. one around for my son. So mm-hmm. it's like it, it, it helped me to, because I was, I've been doing this my whole like you know, I'm trying to kind of start early. Mm-hmm. So that's you know, that I had to keep in mind. Like, am I thinking clear? about what's best for me because of how early my trauma started mm. or am I still kind of you know like um being nice mm. am I being nice or do I really feel okay with this person being around me and the truth mm. is for me I didn't at all I wanted to say you said something about saying no yeah and I think that's I think it ties in both ways because it's like when you think about the sexual abuse in itself we kind of didn't have a chance to say no. Mm-hmm. And if we said no, we it wasn't was listen, yeah. So I think that's why it's so hard for us to create boundaries. Yes. Them. Okay. Because you, you gotta Continue. say no. Yeah. You gotta say no. And it's honestly, it's I'm it's very difficult. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult. So to me, I got a new number. Yeah. I'm not even gonna lie. I got a new number, moved out my state, and kept mm-hmm. it fucking pushing. Mm-hmm. Because I have the willpower at the time that I needed it the most. I didn't have the strength. Yes. No, I didn't have and that. So, and that is okay to know. A lot of people don't know that I don't have the strength to deal with it. So let me just leave it there. People don't realize that, so they don't decide to do something about it. Because they don't know we got. We don't know we got a choice. Yes. Because we didn't have no choices. Mm-hmm, we didn't get a chance mm-hmm. to say no, and and and, and made a difference. And we, we didn't get a fight. Choice. On what if we didn't have no choice on this life that we got right now it's like yeah. what the hell you know what i mean like that. so when you think about being an adult and they don't have to say no mm-hmm. they don't have to create standards mm-hmm. off of what off of what mm-hmm. you're, you're in front of like mm-hmm. where, we, where our standards come from you know what i mean like yeah it's all these levels of confusion and then you gotta say on top of that you gotta say who's the last thing i'm gonna say mm-hmm. so we said say you know the boundaries mm-hmm. and the chooses mm-hmm. it's like what what choice I honestly, I've never had a choice. I think the most choice that I've made was like a job. (laughs) (laughs) Having the choice of having your child. That's a good choice as well. Like my son and my job. I feel like Mm -hmm. even my job, that was a hard choice. Having my son knowing that his dad wouldn't be around. That was a hard choice. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started realizing like, I don't like these choices. Mm -hmm. I don't like seeing no. Mm-hmm. I don't like breaking up with people. Mm-hmm. That's why I would stay with people because I didn't like to be the one to say this is not working for me. 
Mm-hmm. But it's funny because all of the things that I had trouble with growing up or all of the things that I had no choice, choice but to do for me to heal myself. Mm-hmm. Like I had to go against what I was resisting because it, it's exactly what I needed. It's yeah. kind of weird. <laughs> I got you. I wish you because <clears throat> you are correct. When when everything started, you didn't know what to do. And in my case, again, living with my attacker, I didn't have a clue in what to do. I was afraid to say no. I was afraid to do or even be seen, basically. Right? The fact that I wanted to become this small but could not become that small was a challenge in itself right so when creating boundary for my dad's one of the reasons why creating boundaries for myself was difficult because i couldn't protect me there was no one to protect me right so i felt like what the heck there isn't much for me to do go through the motion get saved one day you know what i mean and then i guess that's when religion become a big part because i figure well God is there and he can possibly do something about it, <laughs> which never happened. <laughs> so at the end of the day, there was all of those different factors that I had a recount. And in true all of that, I realized that not only was my freedom not respected and taken seriously, my words wasn't taken seriously and respected. So therefore... Mm-hmm. To myself, I didn't respect me and I didn't want to earn other people's right to respect me because I figure, well, hell, if I don't respect myself, then really hell, I want you respecting me for. So there was no respect in any form or fashion when coming around me. And that's one thing that I realized that during this course, I had to earn that respect back for myself in order for me to really say I deserve you to respect my boundaries I deserve me to be treated this way because I don't treat myself that way I had to take my mental and physical treatment into consideration for myself because no one else took that and I didn't even know what that even looked like in the first place so then having to learn that as a, a person who lives in a community who doesn't even know what that looks like, I don't even see someone who resembles what not wanting to be me looks like. It was pretty difficult coming out from under that rock, right? Mm. And when you sit down and think about it, as most of our Black children and Black girls or boys, we live in an environment that isn't healthy enough to save us or isn't healthy enough for us to say, I want to not be a victim anymore. We continue to live the victimhood of the hood, basically. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Yes. So, so creating boundaries while living in a place that doesn't have boundaries and respect at the same time is ridiculous. It truly, truly is. And growing up in my dynamic, Growing up seeing how my father treated my mom, how the neighbor's um, husband treated her, you know what I mean? And I was surrounded by a bunch of weak women who didn't know how to come out and say that, you know what, I don't like you treating me this way. I don't know. I don't want to be in this situation. The thing that they had to settle for those situations, me now, I figure I have to settle with this bullshit as well because hell, I can't go to the neighbors and say, hey, this is what's happening to me because guess what? I'm going to tell Sherry this, and by 4 o'clock, Sherry, James, well, not James, well, James, John, Patricia, and Samantha Gano. That's how the hood is. Everybody's going to know your story, but not any one of them are going to say, let me help you come out of this situation, and let me also help you heal. There is nothing that resembles that. Because they're not. Mm. It's like it's like misery really loves company, and I think that's one of the hardest pills for us to swallow in the black community. Is like people really do be miserable because mm. it was hard for me to swallow. It felt hard for me to swallow, honestly. I didn't like I don't like I didn't ever like looking down on people, mm. so it was very hard for me to see things for what they were mm. because I felt like I was judging, honestly. Like I'm like, am I judging? Because I don't like this, and I don't like that, and I don't like this. I thought I was judging, and in a moment, literally, I could see it in my head. 
the moment where I felt like I was judging, I fell right into the same shit. Mm. So that's why I'm like, misery do really love company. company. I want to ask you something. Where do you think that self-respect gets lost? Because mm. it's like self-respect is like the respect of self. Mm-hmm. Where do we lose that? Is this something, you think it's something in there where it's like that, that, that we feel responsible? It was never we- there. It was never self-respect especially as a female it's never was there because again we spoke about something earlier when it came i think we should include this in it as well religion right right you weren't taught how to self-respect yourself because guess what the man says this or the man said and that is what goes and you dress a certain way you look a certain way you are then condemned for that all right, so you don't get to learn what that self-respect for yourself is. So we don't really know what self-respect is. And then when we do get up, we think in self-respect is me looking hot, is me, you know, to having this much people looking at how I look and, and, and wanting my attention and all those different things. We think that's what this is, having Gucci's or whatever and all those dramatic shit. We think that's what that self-respect is. But that self-respect is self is respect for self, is respect to where you are willing to go with your actions and your thoughts. How to get self-respect for my thoughts and standards also for my thoughts. So I'm like, why is that you're trying to tell yourself you look awful? Or why is it that you think you deserve that? What kind of standard are you setting for you when you are telling yourself that you cannot accomplish something? What the hell is wrong with you? Why is that you think that you need to continue to hurt yourself? I had to learn how to mm. do that, but it's not in our community. We were never taught that. They're not trying to teach us to children, but I never learned anything. I didn't even know what the hell. So I think I don't ever think I ever heard the word in my community self respect. Sure. That's why Aretha Frank came out with their song. Boom. It's funny because so it says respect is a feeling of deep admiration mm. <laughs> for someone or something. Um, by their ability, I'm sorry, elicited by their abilities, qualities, and achievements. Mm-hmm. So they do make sense. Mm, 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 they make a lot of sense. What about you? Were you taught or see or have ever seen that? <laughs> no, not at all. Not there at all. Not, there was no delay in that. Reply. <laughs> no, and I think, and it's sad because like black women, we're so strong. Mm. like not the way society paints us. yes yes like when we walk in our power and we do know who we are and we do admire our like that's that's why i'm trying to break the definition because we don't admire ourselves mm. we we'll admire outside of ourselves which is false idolization and they say which is a sin our, you know, whatever you the, the video version of us but we do it because that is what we were taught. And it's mm. kind of, it's, it's deep when you think about it because religion really do keep popping in my head and how we've been programmed. Boom. That it, it's, 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 I think that's the scary part about these times. We're seeing our programming in like, mm-hmm. like, like real time. time. Right, real time. Like, it's like, it's, oh, this is what the programming looks like. <laughs> and then they reinforce that shit with movies and rap videos and then they reinforce it with the barbie type women who have the blonde hair and bullshit so people like us who do this and wear our own shit is seen as i don't even know what the hell is it seen people please tell me why we wearing our hair and doing our shit is you see as what because that's us that's our shit you wear your blondes and shit that's your shit we respect that so why is it an issue for us to wear our shit? I think it's still, honestly, and I hate to say it, but it's, I just feel like, I feel like it's an insecurity thing because I've seen, I've seen women, black women say what you just said, like tear mm. down other black women because they wear hair scars, because they wear their natural hair, because they might wear lighter makeup mm. than a whole thing. Like it's, it's so many levels and it's always, it's always like a fight mm-hmm. and it's like mm-hmm. we're not being honest about what that what's really going on mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. because i don't get it either to be honest i didn't did it all i didn't have weave 
I ain't go with the color and the blonde. I couldn't, I couldn't go there for I ain't even gonna host. But when I was wearing mm-hmm. weed, I know for sure, and people hate when I say this, but it's it's my truth. Mm-hmm. I was only wearing weed. I was only wearing a bunch of makeup every day, all day, because I was insecure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. that's just what it was. And I and like I said in my other video I did a long time ago. I was around men who didn't appreciate my naturalness, mm. who didn't appreciate me only wearing mascara and not foundation and contour and da, da, da. all those things. I wasn't around no black men who wanted me as a black woman. Mm-hmm. They wanted a black woman to look like other women. A women. And that's exactly. what we were saying earlier with we not being honest. Like you got a lot of black men that do secretly insult black women mm, and mm-hmm. on, a, on a public platform they then take them same insults and flip them around and make it seem like we the problem yeah that's why i was saying, calling us broken and all of these other things and then you got other black women who then take those internalized feelings and project them onto the next black woman mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know and again i feel like a lot of them I'm not saying I'm not trying to be smart for what i'm about to say but i feel like a lot of the same way they say like I seen a post that was like people only mad about makeup because they don't know how to do it. Mm. And it might be some some degree. You see, I know how to do makeup. It might not be you know what they talk about. Like, but I mm. will say this too. I feel like a lot of the women who, who do pass judgments on women who are more natural is because they feel like they can't be natural. Mm-hmm. A lot of women that wear a lot of weaves and shit, been there, done it, don't got no edges. Mm. Like so they couldn't that's what I'm saying. You couldn't wear no, you couldn't wear your hair low. You couldn't wear your hair natural. You can't rock out with your edges out. Like a lot of girls that go shaking their hair, that's pressed. Mm-hmm. Go and say, but I got hair, but you don't have no edges. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm saying. You're not trying to be smart. You're really just trying to bring awareness to you, damaging you. Because mm-hmm. it's all keeping us divided. It ain't necessary. Yeah. It's really not necessary. But look at this. I wanted to share something with you. The same thing where you say the women wear makeup and it's lighter. Let me share. Oh, gosh, darn it. It's not there. Let me share a screen so you can see what I mean. And this is a whole different culture. Oh, my God. This girl is getting married. You can see it. Can you? Yes. I'm on YouTube, right? This girl, she is getting married. And as you can see, she is Indian in a different country, Somalia, I think. Yes. All right. Let me see. And they're getting married to each other. But she is, this is her hair. Let me see if I can find her. I don't want you to go through all that extra shit. Where's she at? I think I just saw her too. Yeah? I want to... Oh. Yeah. Look at... Let me see. You said, thank God I'm getting married now. Yes, right? Wow. She's there 18, I think. Or not far. Is there nowhere close to 25? He's a young footballer. She is still young and they're in love and they're getting married. Mm. And this is a different country, but look at the wedding dresses. Look at the women there, right? The mannequin God is not even bad. There's no black mannequin there. These people are dark skinned people. This girl is beautifully melanated, right? Mm. Yeah. See, beautifully melanated. And let me fast forward to her doing her makeup and how she came out. Yeah, they be light and light and light and light. Thank you. So. And he getting a facial. He he good. He don't have a makeup. He's beautiful. Look at this child. You see her? Why does she think she needs to look this clear? Yeah, a lot darker. You, you. Let me see if you saw her probably because I didn't even pause for you to see her. Let me see. Yeah. Why does she have to do that? This is in Somalia. When people yeah, think yeah. that, thank you. Look at that, right? Yeah. And she's there, and her hair is straightened. 
right mm. so when people think that these issues that is happening in america are apart in the caribbean is not everywhere it is just here it is everywhere that women don't have love for them true for their true selves and with whereas we don't have the self-respect that we should have for ourselves because we want to look like other people how the mm. hell would we have self-respect for ourselves if we were looking like people other people and other races the, the, you remember the, the contacts um contact yeah. era when the, all the girls were wearing different girl, they still wearing them. girl. people still wearing contacts Mm-mm. what the hell is wrong with brown eyed people huh what wrong with my brown I got beautiful ass brown eyes and when I go into to, to the sun this shit light up golden what was right. that? you know what I mean so when when we talking about the self respect and and all these and different boundaries for ourselves, we can't have that. And then you, as as a person who was abused, right, grew up in that environment, right, seeing other women not loving themselves, seeing other people not loving you at the same time, how are you going to mentally come out of that hole? You're going to be broken. Then that brokenness going into a relationship with a man who is also broken. And then you hear, oh, all black women is bitter. What is mm. this child's life story that you would call her bitter? Do you know anything of her? When you met her, what was she wearing? Was she wearing mm. false nails or a lot of makeup? And the people here, what type of female do you think you're getting if she can't even wear her own self? She's afraid to come to you in her true form. So she comes to you in another form. Mm. That in itself is bitterness when it is that you want her to continue to look her way mm. you know what i'm thinking because mm. <laughs> i think i talked about this in the beginning of the series about mm. the first the first person that told me i was beautiful was my was yes. my rapist yes and at that time i didn't have no makeup i wasn't i was natural i was a baby i was a kid mm-hmm. and i'm wondering if it's like that avoidance within itself too Mm. because it's like when you take all of that stuff off you gotta face the truth Ooh. and then a lot of times when you face the truth the truth reminds you of your past it reminds mm. you of your pain it remi- like I know for me like I feel like a little kid when I don't have no like I feel like a little kid all over again I'm 30 mm-hmm. <laughs> and I can literally before I put my face in the day I feel like a little baby mm-hmm. I'm like I feel like a little baby who is this little lady over here mm-hmm. like so it's like I'm wondering if that's like a connection too, Queen. Like with the, like when our traumas even occur, and like I'm trying to think, like are we trying to, are we trying to attract a man, or are we, what are we doing? We're trying to live for somebody else. We're not living for ourselves. Yeah, that's but I'm just like, like what are we really doing, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> good question what are we doing for ourselves put that there what are we doing for ourselves i don't think it's fair and go it's like we should be able to just get up and go but again i think we just were saying like with with our own with our own people Mm -hmm. who literally judge a woman because she's natural mm. judge a woman because she ain't packing makeup on every mm-hmm. single i had people that like literally came at me because I, like i said i can i can do the makeup thing it ain't that deep however when i was in a relationship with people like with a guy i'm like i ain't about to do that every day yes. like you want to see me for me like mm-hmm. and i remember having a friend or friends that was like you don't throw your makeup in before he come over or you wow. don't you I'm about to do all the and that like, within the self show them that they don't value you and who you are they see the persona of society but not you of itself that's so what that- I, <laughs> I couldn't even get you a queen that's how I, it made me more insecure hearing yes. other black women listen i mean it, it made me more insecure hearing other black women tell me i wasn't good enough mm, 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 mm. like well, why you ain't or why you ain't, and that's why I said it'd be those projections because they're not comfortable with being themselves. Mm. And I feel like that, that's why I feel like, honestly, go back to what we were talking about in the beginning of this conversation. Like, if we don't start creating boundaries with how we allow in this other people, mm-hmm. right? Like, other people, 
and I'm gonna be honest, I want to say black men too. Yeah. Like, like, cause they be, they be, they hear that and they don't hear it. Like, they, yeah. we need to be mindful about the the role we give black men in our life. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I don't mean it in no in no bad way, but I feel like we put so much energy into, like she just said in the video, thank God I'm getting married. Right. She we think that's so much it for energy. her. It's like the end all be all. And like mm-hmm. you said, it goes back to religion where you got the one, the woman takes care of the kids and the, the woman goes towards the man and then the man go to God. Like mm-hmm. I never liked that myself. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why well, I gotta go through so many steps to get to God? Yeah. Yeah. So you got men, you got women that think like literally like they can't find God until they find the man. Mm-hmm. Because he's supposed like, to be closer to him than we are. But yet we are the person that creates life here. So how sense. does that make sense? Because we how spend in more too much time and energy into trying to attract the man than we are trying to see if we can find God within ourselves. Because we did. And it's like, God, don't, it ain't man or woman when it comes down to who can connect with God. Mm. That's why I don't really particularly like religion. Mm. Because it's like always the he, 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 he. I'm like, all right, now. I get it. Mm. We can speak it, but come on now. Like, mm. you got God, you got goddesses. Mm. So how can you just particularly say that God is a man or God is a woman? Yeah. Nature so, is like both male and female, but there is not one gender or anything nature balanced itself out so how is there just a certain gender playing that role it both come together both bring that balance and that is the balance that we of ourselves weren't taught and this is why we Mm. think we had to accept certain treatment as women because guess what you they always say well you're not the only person that was abused or whatever the case is yes that is a good point but why am I not the only one? Why are there other females out there unprotected, but yet the man is supposed to provide and protect, but he's not protecting the females mm-hmm. that he's still put here to provide and protect for. It's in your and what is he providing? Thank you very much. That's what I'm saying. That's what I said. Honestly, Queen, I feel like it's just the time to call it out for what it is. Like we were seeing it earlier in the conversation. Because it's like, what are you actually providing? We know you're not protecting. No, you're Do not. we know that? You're, you're a part like, of the issue that we have. She and I were both molested by black men. Come on More now. than one time. Oh, it wasn't so, no one time. Okay. More so, than one time. So that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, we are out here talking about the man is supposed to, but the man has not been taking his role as seriously as he's supposed to because he of himself don't even know himself you you think a self-respecting loving man would see a child and be attracted Mm. to her or him Mm. come on now they will try to protect that child and rear that child differently but that's Mm. that's not what people are focusing on they're focusing oh you put yourself in that position you shouldn't do this you should how is a child supposed to know that they're supposed to look a certain way not to give bad eye for a grown ass adult who's supposed to protect them do you think that's like the narcissist i I, I hate it yes it is is that just like to me a man that would say that to a woman i feel like either did it to another woman or it happened to him. No, no, no. That is the females that are saying that. The fe- well, I've seen the men do it too. So let's say it that let's say let's say let's add both of what we just said together. Then. Mm-hmm. Any person that would say that to somebody, whether that be male or female, mm-hmm. had to have it done to them. And I feel like they just repeat mm-hmm. the same Yes, yes. And that- they done it. A lot of people that we be talking to, a lot of these men and women that's on these platforms and that's still in the shine and all of that mm-hmm. stuff. They the ones that's out here. They they they. they I'm not saying they all are, yes, but yes. some of them are the rapists, the, the pedophiles. Mm. They're no one calling them out on their mm. shit. A lot of these people, you can tell by the way that they talk, the way that they talk, you mm. can tell mm. that some ain't right. Yeah. Like they 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 trying to keep they self like under this certain like blanket. Almost. Yeah, and and try to put a persona of I am likable and I am this in order to hide who they truly like are. Like a person. Yeah, because that's exactly what I grew up with when 
I grew up with my father. He had the persona. I, we, I said that in the in yeah. the um the nurture is the bad guy. He was in the community. Everyone loved him. Like if he runs mm. for mayor, gaudy people will vote for him type of thing. And then people were scared of him. So he built that persona, but behind closed doors, he was doing things that those people would not would not give or care to. Mm. So most of the Mm-hmm. most of it is is usually like that and there aren't a lot of people who are brave enough to talk about it because society shut down conversations like this for the love of god my other videos have more views than this mm. series because of how deep this series is that's what i'm saying people don't want to face this reality because there are a lot there are children right now i'm very sure of it are being child trafficked somewhere some child is being molested somewhere but if we were brought, were brought up the right way and to show that a self-respecting person, self-loving person would not go to the length of living their full perversion, right? And actually way back where this perversion come from. A lot of us don't want to admit that the perversion that we know are what trickled down from slavery. It may have happened before that, but we are here in recent time. Mm-hmm. in recent time how you think all these people got um, a bunch of children and got interracial children from rape no consenting slave was going to go and sleep with massa massa Gaudi would rape that person and rape became a normal thing so now society thinks that is normal so they allow that shit to happen then massa go sleep with his his daughter or whatever pedophilia became normal because of that sense so no one sit down and said this is not a normal occurrence and we should nip it in the bud not only that the person who decides to do this we have to e- evaluate this person and figure out what they're thinking why they would think that this is something normal to do because it happens to them right and why is they think that they can only gain control because most of this is about control from abusing a child mm. that's exactly what it is because a lot of a lot of people that prey on us they only do it when we're weak mm. like even when i was in a domestic violence situation with my child's father he only did it when i got sick when i got physically ill and i could no longer really defend myself it was all it was a rape mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a rape like mm-hmm. so it, it, it's very interesting when you do see why people pray like they do pray on weaker people whether you weak in the moment or whether mm-hmm. you know what I mean it don't even matter but if something about you that they feel like they can take advantage of they want to take advantage of it mm-hmm. and, and you 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 you're, you're a thousand percent right about this and mm-hmm. I feel like people they, they go it goes right back into the boundaries and, mm-hmm. and 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 the standards that we have like the fact that we in order for this to stop we would have to speak up about it yes that's why we don't that's why we're doing this now mm-hmm. because it's like if, if it's not us then who yeah yeah we I'm not <laughs> and okay then and not just and now and she and i always we've been saying this in each video we are not just speaking up about it because we want to hear we're speaking up about it letting you know how it affects us that's why we have different topics each series so we are speaking about the, the different things that go through our mind, the different... Hey you, yes you. So thank you so much for watching my video and I hope that you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for coming to my page. So I would like for you to subscribe and I also want you to watch the last video and I hope that you enjoy everything on my channel. Thank you.